University of South Dakota. I'm balling out. Um, <clears throat> for all you guys and people that say that you can't go D1 and you can't make it, um, tell them to kick rocks. You can do whatever you put your mind to as long as you're focused. And I hope these videos kind of help you give you a mindset of kind of where I'm at. Again, the only reason I'm doing this because I'm getting a lot of people coming at me now about like from like my TikTok and things like that. And I want to make sure that I'm putting out, kind of give you guys, catch you guys up to speed the best way I can uh, to kind of where I'm at right now. Um, and I have a lot to share with you guys, a lot to share. But you're probably wondering, okay, what's the rise and fall A1? Who is A1? Okay, A1 is me. A1 was my alter, was my alter ego. A1 was A for Austin, one for number one. When I went to USD, I had the number one jersey. Um, I was number one. Jerseys were in the store. Jerseys were on campus. Like, I was A1. I was that dude. I did everything fucking perfect. It is what it is. First year coming to USD, bro, as a linebacker, bro, I came in, um, starter, led the team in, um, led the team in sacks, led the conference in sacks, uh, led the conference in TFLs, uh, was that dude in Missouri Valley. Defense stepped up from the year before, gave it up. Um, I think we had the number one pass defense for a cool minute. Also helped, the helped out the defense in run stopping. They went from like giving up four or five yards of carry to less than around three, 3.3 3 or 3.8, something like that, when I came in as a starter. Junior year was freaking awesome. Great experience, great time. We didn't win every game, but a lot of games were extremely close. We were on the right path to do what we need to do. I came in and filled in the spot. What I kind of set out to do when I came to the school was I said, that, hey, you know, I can make an impact. I can make an impact on this team um, if I'm here. Like, I know I can step this defense up. And that was kind of like the pressure I put on myself. Um, was I still growing from a junior year? Yeah. But I was, I was on point. I was really on point. So, like, after being – after that first year, bro, Lord have mercy, bro. It was a fun year. I played with some really good players. Um, really fun year. It was a good year of D1 football, bro, for me, from all from all levels, from an academic standpoint, social aspect of it, football aspect, relationship wise. I had a fun time my first year of football. Like it was legit. It was legit. It was literally awesome. Um, I don't even know how to describe it. Like we had good trainers, good coaching staff, um, good people in the weight room helping us out. Good decent players around us. Um, we were throwing parties, bro. We was out there just having a blast, like, out there in South Dakota. Like, it was really, like, the best time. And that's what I consider, like, the rise of, like, the A1. Like, literally probably one of the greatest linebackers at all. I consider myself one of the greatest linebackers of all time. It's from a statistical standpoint, um, the stats speak for themselves. So. Um, I would think we're on, like, a more of a winning team. I definitely think we, I, myself, would get more notoriety. notoriety. Um, but, again, I tell you guys all the time. I am not nothing without my D-line. I am not nothing without my coaches. I am not nothing without my DBs behind me. I am nothing without my will backer. I am being a little cocky and freaking from position of power right here, but I'm t telling y'all straight up, I am not who I am. I cannot be cocky like this if I'm not protected by my D-line and got my right hand will beside me and got some coaches behind me. You just can't. So like, I'm speaking like this because just like I had those people, like it's a cocky standpoint, like, yeah, I'm cocky about it because I had a solid group around me. I know they're not out here vocalizing it right now, but if I'm speaking for them, I'm speaking it like, yeah. And I expect my D-line, like guys like Drew Any and Nick Jacobs, I expect for them to be cocky too up front too as well. Kyle Guziak, John Russell, like Ken Lockey, Booski, he was trash, but <laughs> Booski not trash. I don't know how he will even start a senior year, but we'll get to that. Um, but a lot of things, you know what I mean? Like, it was like really cool vibes. It was like really cool vibes and things like that, like on all levels. Um, anyways, the rise, <laughs> the rise was like unique, bro. Like, so we were like, it was kind of like this, like came in, literally just balling, like the face of the, at this point, like, bro, I'm like the face of the defense, bro. Like I'm on point. So summer, summer comes around, bro. And like, bro, I did a bad job at, um. Something I learned from uh, as a man, like as a backer, I hope this can you guys understand this too on a serious note. I learned that you can be honest and you don't need to be dishonest about things. If you ever have a situation at home, make sure you're just being honest about it to your coaches and just keep it a buck, bro, because it can make you look out to be something that you're really not. Do you being fear, you not being just being open. Have some humility 
and be like, be open and be honest with your coaches and what's going on, whether it's at home or somewhere else, like a family life, and be super honest because the school and program will help you out as much as they can if you're being direct and being honest. Um, I wasn't, bro, and I regret that shit. And I tried to clean it up, but I couldn't. You know that that I don't know. I was a young bro, and like I wish I could go back and fix things, but it. If that didn't happen, I wouldn't be probably who I am right now. Like, um, so long story short, this was the fall of A1. So the fall of A1 came like this. Go to summer camp. I'm supposed to come back for summer, um, for summer workouts and things like that. If your coaches and team, listen, my advice to y'all, if their coaches, college coaches, want you there for summer, your ass better be there. In the story, <laughs> you better be there. Um, bottom line, bottom line, make sure you're there. If they want you guys there for summer, for summer workouts, make sure you're there. That'd be my best advice to you for you young backers and things like that. Especially if you like the face of the defense and things like that. They need you there because it's going to attract other players there too as well. Because, like, oh, okay, Austin's there. Oh, yeah, I'm there too because I'm competing. That fool's there. Hell yeah. But if you're not there, it's a bad look. Make sure you have your people there so they're in the mix so your team sees, the younger guys see that. Like, you want to make sure you're there. It's bigger than just you. You know what I mean? Make sure you're there if you're a squad. And then if things are going on at home, make sure you're being straight up. Just keep it a G about it. Don't, like, be, don't like BS around it and stuff like that. Keep it a buck, bro, like, at all times with your coaches, bro. They'll work with you, bro, if, they, if you're being straight up and keeping, the, and keeping it a G with them. Um, I wasn't in keeping the G, so that's why the sort the fall came. Um, so, going to my senior year, bro, I was getting Bitch. So this is things how change it switched up now on me, okay? So before, remember I was telling you guys like social standpoint. So my senior year, bro, my social life on fire, bro. School life involved in school on fire, bro. Hey, football. Hey, bro, I got a bitch, bro. They benched me. Hey, I didn't start a single game my senior year. They had me coming off the bench. I was still making plays, though. But, yeah, I was coming off the bench, and they had this guy named Booski ahead of me. And I'm just like, bro, Booski's legs were like – Booski's legs were like this, right? Like, like he had these little legs. <laughs> like, like Booski – and I love my bo – my boy Booski was the man. He was the man, bro. But Booski should never been on the field, bro. Like, I don't know what the, hey, the coach was really trying to prove a point, and I was cool with it, bro. Again, like I understood why, and I get it. But I was, I didn't think personally, like, oh my, bro, like, coach, like, Booski, like, really, bro, like, that's what we're doing here. Come on, Bres, come on, Bresky, like, you know what I mean? Like, come on now, <laughs> like. But I, I understand, and sometimes coaches, coaches can be arrogant. Sometimes they can be arrogant. Um, Pertino was smooth. I think he ran a good scheme. I liked his scheme. I felt like I would have excelled in it the next year. Um, they tried to have me more of an outside linebacker position, uh, doing a lot of pass rushing and things like that. Me personally, I had the stamina to do middle linebacker, but again, I wasn't. I was getting benched straight up. I regret. I think that something I missed on phone was that I think I should have embraced that role as coming in as third down pass rushing. So like, if you're ever in a position as like a player. And your coach puts you in a position that you're not necessarily feeling at all. Embrace the embrace that role. Embrace that role in all aspects. Man, okay, this is what I'm doing. I wasn't feeling it, bro. Like y'all not about to just. I was just like, you know what? Hey, I'd be over it at practice, and we were just losing. I think we won like one or two games. I I was like a heavy hitter on the team, bro. And I was like, bro, I'd be out, bro. Like having a good time because like, oh, y'all not gonna play me? Okay, cool, bet. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out in um. Uh, what's it called? What's that place called? Um. What's that place called? The bar. I forgot the bar. What's the bar? What's that bar called? Um, the pub. Bro, I'll be out in the pub. OLC like on the weekends. I'd be seeing the training staff in there too. But oh, Austin, you here? I'm like, yeah, you here too? <laughs> like, what you doing here? You don't, don't you got practice? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm here. I'm here too. You ain't got me playing, so I might as well be out. So like, from a social standpoint, my senior year in college. I was out, bro, like, having a good time, bro. Like, I, I wish I was out there on the field more, but I understood why I wasn't on the football field. I get it. And I was not going to embrace that role. The ego is in the way, and I was not feeling that. This was the biggest fall of my career 
and it was definitely a growing it was a growing point too. I was heavily involved in school though on campus, and this is the biggest thing. Some I think to the point where it was almost like we we're trying to break. I took it as like okay, we're trying to teach this guy a lesson, and we're trying to like break him. Sometimes if people don't understand, like with me myself, bro, you're not just gonna break me. There's so many other positive things that I tune into in my life. And sometimes I just be perceived during football, like, oh, football player, football player A1. I'm like, no, 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 that's not, that's not me. Like, I do a lot of other things outside of just football. Um, football is a small portion of my life. Like, they broke me down. From a football standpoint, yeah, you got the one up. But from a social standpoint and educational standpoint, like, I was that dude, bro, like, in the classroom handling business, getting extra help. Um, involved in clubs and things like that because I'm just like, you guys aren't just going to ruin my college. Like, that's just not how it was going to be. So I was hanging out, having a good time. Um, I come to practice late, come to workouts late. Like, what's up? Y'all not going to play me anyway. You know what I mean? That was my mindset because it was just like, this is my last year. Y'all BSing. I'm supposed to be getting out of here next year anyway. Um, you guys know I'm talented. What's the point, bro? Like, but again, I understood why, and I'm not mad at them for it because they were trying to teach me a lesson, but I don't think that it was the right way. But that's not my call, and that's not my position. I had to kind of just take it on the chin. I would never, I'll tell you something from a social standpoint. Like, if you're doing things like that, like on a solo note, I don't recommend anybody do what I do. Don't, I'm a different type of cat, bro. Like, I'm just on like some positive note. Like, you're not about to just do, you're not about to just do that to me. I, I got other things I can do. Like, if you want to take that away from me, cool, I'll go do this. Like, I don't recommend you guys, if I'm giving you guys feedback, don't do what I do. I think there's a way to be preventive. So, like, being straight up, like I said, keeping the G and stuff like that. Don't put yourself in situations that I've been in. I know these past couple of episodes, I've been telling y'all about, like, things that I've went through, like, as a player. Like, bro, don't even put yourself in that position. I'm telling you, don't do it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm giving you a heads up. That's why I'm hoping, like, this thing kind of gets to some of y'all, like, um, don't put yourself in that position at all. Please don't. Because there's just way better things... There's other things that's going on. Just don't do it. Um, I got spit. So anyways, um, yeah, I'm getting bent all year long. And I'm not giving a damn. I'm out here having fun. I'm having a good time. But besides that, um, it gets better. <laughs> it gets better. So I'm bent last game. I'm like, cool, bro. I went through the season, no injuries. I'm still out in the mix. I'm having a good time in school. Um, I really got nothing to say like to the coaches or nothing like that at that standpoint. So then um, it's time for training, bro. Like I got to get ready for the next level. CFL, Canada, like I, it's time to get after it. Um, go back home, bro. And I was like, I gotta get these workouts in. So you guys don't know, I'm Canadian. Okay. So my dad played football in Canada, big name, this and that. I have, I got invited to the CFL Regional Combine. I still got agents, excuse me. I still got agents and stuff hitting me up. And I, I didn't even play. I'm like, what the hell? So these guys are hitting me up. I get into the Regional Combine. Excuse me. I get into the Regional Combine in, um, in Edmonton up in Canada, bro. All eyes on me. Literally all eyes on me. I'm training heavy with my pops back home, bro, like in Cali. Like we really getting after it, training hard. Um, all eyes on me on all aspects of the game. I go out there. I ball out during this combine. Uh, I bench press 225 like 29 times. Um, just on fire, bro. Run like 4'7". I'm like at 240. Like, I'm on point, bro. Like, no one's fucking with me, bro. Like, I'm really like that dude, like being super solid, bro. So then um, after that, bro, we... Um, after that, we... I get invited to the main combine in Toronto, okay? And then shit goes bad. <laughs> so I get invited to the major, the CFL combine. Like this is the this is the NFL of Canada. Like this is the big deal. Like this is a huge deal. Like they fly me out, I get my gear, like I'm I like I'm in the hotel in Toronto, like I'm kicking it with Drake, like <laughs> like it was like a cool, like this is dope. Like they fly me around, like this is cool, you know what I mean? So first, I had two train out, two tryouts I needed to do. I had my pro day, and then I also had my CFL combine. My biggest mistake that I made was training, doing the workout my pro day. My hamstring was already kind of tight. I was going from train to plane to plane. I just got down with the one combine. Then I flew back to, to South Dakota for the CFL for the um, pro day, and bro. 
I pulled my hamstring bad, bro, during pro day. Real bad, bro. I pulled it bad, bro. Bro, that hurt my draft stock. Bro, that killed me, bro. Like, I was like, damn, bro. <sighs> bro, that shit hurt, bro. I was like, bro, I've never had no injury like this. I've never been hurt before, but I really pulled my hamstring right now. That shit was already tight. I'm like, bro, why did I do this run? So I'm like, bro, I'm done. I'm done. I'm going to try to get ready for the combine. Bro. So I'm going to fucking con I'm in I'm in Toronto now. Like the comp the, the pro day went to shit. Pro day went to complete shit. It hurt. I couldn't run. They want to see me run. I can't run. Like that's the one thing they want to see. I'm explosive as hell. I'm talking about running like four six, four seven, like bro, I could not run. So I go to Pro Day, bro, and can I mean um the CFL combine. I'm flying out to, to the CFL. Bro, I'm doing these interviews, right? Bro, why are these people in these interviews asking me about why I didn't play? They're asking me these questions. They're asking me about, like, uh, and I'm like, bro, what the fuck do I even say? How do I explain somebody of my caliber not playing? And it's what I go back to from the last episode of just being honest about some things that's going on. I kind of, like, try to, like, finesse a little bit, like, I'll, I should have just kept it a bucket, but, hey, this is what happened, this is what happened. But I didn't. So what happened was, bro, I ended up, like, really... I've been getting ate up in the interviews, bro. Like, they're asking me, are you hurt? Like, yeah, bro, my, my hamstring. But I was still like, you know, I can run, I can run. But I don't think it was a good idea. I was still trying to, like, do too much. And that wasn't smart on my end at all. Was not smart on my end at all. Um, so, interviews go to shit. They're asking me about my parties I threw and all this stuff. Like, they ask about everything. This is, like, some high-level stuff. Like, I'll talk about... I'm in a room of like six or seven coaches just lined up, like some experience that some people will never ever get to experience. Super dope experience though, don't get me wrong, like I love that shit. Um, I go to the combine, bro, I do so shitty. Like I can't even run the damn 40, I'm looking bad right now, bro. I can't even do no shuttle, bro. I'm like, oh, bro, I'm done, bro. Like, hey, I'd be surprised if anybody signs me. So the, the combine just goes bad. You know what I mean? It's just automatically bad. Interviews went bad. Workout went bad. And this is just the fall of A1. Like, this is the fall. This is the fall of me, bro. Like, this was a dramatic just do 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 And then it went bad. Like, this is really bad. Like, um, anyways, bro, I end up having, I go back, fly back to Cali this draft day, bro. Um, I go unsigned, undrafted. I'm in the, I'm in the, I'm with my mom, bro. Sad day, bro. Agent called me, I'm like fuck. You know, it's just like, damn. So what do I do? Um, I actually go work out that day to get my mind off things, go hit a run. Like, I'm just like, damn, bro. So this is it. I'm like, this is it. This is it. Uh. Yeah, it was a dark time. It was a dark, that was a dark, that draft day, bro, was a dark, that was a dark moment, bro. Draft day was dark. When you go on draft day, you got your family there, it's just like, oh, shit was dark. But the comeback was real. The comeback was real. The comeback was real. Um, it was a return. It was a return of the J. It was a return of the J. Um, Episode five is coming, and I hope you guys enjoy it. But yeah, it was it was a dark time. The, the fall that was a complete fall. Just like, okay, what do we do? Uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys are tuning.